Hi, my name is Glenda Sims, and I'm the lead accessibility expert at DeQ. And today we're going to continue talking about WCAG 2.1. Our focus today will be on mobile. In our previous sessions, we've gone in detail on low vision and cognitive, and now it's time to dive into mobile. In this WCAG 2.1 working draft that's as recent as December 7th, there are 10 success criteria that are being proposed that came out of the needs for accessibility related to mobile devices. So let's work through those 10 so I can basically give you an introduction. The first one that comes into play is the character key shortcuts. It's proposed at level single A. And if this isn't done correctly and a person is trying to use speech to text, if character key shortcuts is failed as a success criterion, <clears throat> then people using speech to text are going to end up triggering some kind of activity that they did not mean to do. So my persona quote for this one is, oh no, computer, that's not what I meant you to do. So when we're thinking about why we're doing this. Um, the specific SC text at this point in time reads like this. If a keyboard shortcut consists entirely of one or more character keys is implemented in content, then a mechanism is available to turn it off or remap it to a shortcut that can be used with at least one non-character key. Unless there is a keyboard shortcut for a user interface component is only active when that component has focus. So it's written very precisely and important for testability, but in general, that means um, let's make it possible for people that use speech to text on their mobile devices to do it without triggering things by mistake. The second SC that I want to cover <coughs> is also to do with speech to text. And it's called label in name a requirement at single A in the proposal. Imagine you're talking to your computer, which is far more common these days, and you're trying to submit a form, but you don't know what the computer wants you to call that submit button. That's what this one is about. My persona quote for this one is, computer, submit the form, computer curse word, why aren't you doing what I said? Why aren't you doing what I want? And that's because we don't have any requirements in WCAG 2.0 to cover how would I verbally tell the computer to do something. So requirement for label and name is for user interface components with labels that include text or images of text, the name contains the text presented so that when we're trying to talk to our computers, we can do it and we'll know the name because we can see it on screen if we're sighted or a person using a screen reader could hear it because that label would match. So that's label and name, important for us interfacing by voice. The next SC is called pointer gestures, again, focused on mobile. And I have a funny persona quote for this one. And it is, you expect me to do that complex hand gesture? Are you kidding me? What is this, the finger Olympics? Because while it may be simple for some of us to make certain hand gestures on our mobile devices or any touch screen device, for people with a motor disability, that might be impossible for them to achieve. So this new pointer gestures, SC recommended in WCAG 2.1 is about making sure that it's possible for everyone to achieve. The specific SC text for pointer gestures is all functionality, which uses multi point or path based gestures for operation, can be operated with a single pointer unless that multi point or path based gesture is essential. So 
very important uh, SC filling a gap uh, in WCAG 2.1. So I'm very hopeful that that one will make it all the way in. The next one also has to do with pointers and it is called pointer cancellation. Single level A is the proposal. And imagine that you're working with your mobile device and maybe you have a motor disability, maybe you don't. And all of a sudden you were just trying to do something and it actually submitted. You were just trying to move around or investigate something on the screen, but it actually went ahead and submitted and you didn't intend that. Pointer cancellation is for providing this way back out. So my persona quote for this one is, holy curse word, I didn't mean to just do that. The SC text for this particular one is for functionality, which can be operated using a single pointer, at least one of the following is true. That it doesn't happen on a down event, that there's a way to undo it, and that if you pull up, it will reverse it, or there is an exception, an essential exception. So I didn't read all the text to you because it's really long, but it is allowing you to not get stuck with trying to do something on your screen and it actually submitting without that being your true intention. So I think that one will be very useful for all of us. This next one, I think you're gonna relate to um, whether you have a disability or not, and it is called target size for mobile devices coming in at AA recommended. So have you ever tried to use your mobile device and you're trying to tap on one thing, but it's so close to another that you hit the other thing by mistake? That's because sometimes the things that are active on the screen are so small, you really can't get your finger on it or it's very difficult to get your finger on just that one thing. So my persona quote on this one is, what the heck? How am I supposed to touch something that small? Who do you think I am? Ant-Man, you know, my fingers are this big. <laughs> So I think this one will be very valuable for all humans. And right now it's sitting at this. I'm going to read part of the text to you. The size of the target for pointer inputs is at least 44 by 22 CSS pixels, except when there's an equivalent. So there's another way to do it somewhere else on the screen that's larger. Or it was provided by the user agent, the author didn't do anything. So I'm not gonna hold the author responsible for something if that's the way the browser did it by default. Or it's essential. So I think this will be one that's very appreciated uh, by all of us as we use our mobile devices. Make it so I can actually touch it with my finger and trigger what I intended to trigger. Target size that I just went over double A actually has a triple A version of itself, which is called target size enhanced. And so it's really the same concept, but instead of the size of the target for pointer inputs being at 22 by 44 CSS pixels, wouldn't it be awesome if it was 44 by 44 CSS pixels. So that's what target size enhanced is. It's just raising that 44 dimension in both directions. That would be coming in as a AAA. Anything that you're seeing as a AAA is a best practice. We certainly encourage it, um, but I've never seen it as a legal requirement if you're looking at it from that angle. The next SC is called concurrent input mechanism. This one is coming in at triple A, and it relates to perhaps as a user, whether you're using a mobile device or using a, a laptop, perhaps you want to switch between input devices. Uh, maybe you want to go from touch screen to voice, you want to add a keyboard in the middle of a, of a workflow. You should be able to do that. So concurrent input mechanism, uh, my persona quote is, 
please let me switch between input devices as I need to. The specific FC text for concurrent input mechanisms as it stands now is web content does not restrict the use of input modalities available on a platform except where the restriction is essential, required to ensure the security of the content, or required to respect user settings. So I think that even coming in at AAA, this is something that we should pay attention to when we care about the usability of our sites. It's a wonderful best practice. The next one is motion actuation. And this one is coming in at single level A. And it's been a complicated one to get the wording right. It's related to don't make me, the user, tilt or shake the device. And I haven't been following this one as closely, but in what I'm hearing in conversations is they're actually thinking about augmented reality and virtual reality in this. So making sure as we move into those spaces that they're fully accessible to all people. Persona quote again is, please don't make me tilt or shake. Um, I may need to perform uh, the action in some other way, through a keyboard, through speech, uh, give me some other options. The specific SC text for this is functionality, which can be operated by device motion or user motion can be operated by user interface components and can be disabled to prevent accidental activation, except when it's accessibility supported or it's essential. So in this day and age where our computers are paying attention to what we're doing <laughs> out in space by watching us with their cameras or what we're doing to the device by tilting or shaking it, make sure that we can prevent accidental activation. Um, or make it possible for somebody to activate it all. So very important. The next one is called orientation and it's coming in at a double A requirement. And what I hadn't realized is how important it is to not force a person to use their device in a particular orientation, whether it's portrait, landscape, that kind of thing. So my persona quote is, don't force me to rotate my mobile device. Why is this important? I want you to imagine a person who has a motor disability that may be in a wheelchair that has a very valuable, um, useful mobile device attached to their wheelchair and it's attached in one orientation and they can't move it. So maybe it's portrait. If you require that screen to work only in landscape and they can't turn it, they're kind of stuck using the web like this. Um, that's really not polite, right? <laughs> so the SC text for orientation is content does not restrict its view and operation to a single display orientation, such as portrait or landscape, unless a specific display orientation is essential. So don't worry if you have a really good reason why you have to go portrait or landscape in this one part of your mobile app, rock on. You're going to meet the essential exception. But please don't restrict it and make us walk around or use our devices like this. And the last SC for mobile that's in the December 7th WCAG 2.1 version is called status change. And it's at double A, proposed to be at double A. My persona quote is simply, I can't tell if anything has happened. If you're a screen reader user and something has changed on the screen, sometimes it's hard to know that. Sometimes the screen reader hasn't been given that extra piece of information that a person that can see the screen saw this movement up here and went, oh, there's a new message up here. Screen reader user may not have been made aware of that particular thing. And a person with a cognitive disability may have missed it as well. 
or heck, we all may have missed it because hmm, it was just hard to see. But in the case of people with visual disabilities or cognitive disabilities, it's a major barrier. So that's what status change is about. That persona quote again is, uh, did anything happen or what? It, it, did it listen to me? Did it, did it take my submit? The SC text for this particular one is, in content implemented using markup languages, status messages can be programmatically determined through role or properties, such that they can be presented to the user by assistive technology without receiving focus. I think that this will be another one uh, to discuss in greater detail later because many people may already be calling this as a failure in WCAG 2.0, uh, where it is not a failure of the normative language, unfortunately, of WCAG 2.0. It is certainly within the spirit of WCAG 2.0, but WCAG 2.1 is meant to fill that gap and make sure that we can call it a failure in WCAG 2.1. That brings us to the conclusion of an introduction to the new SC as they sit on December 7th for WCAG 2.1. We've discussed low vision, cognitive, and mobile SC. Remember, there are a total of 20 new proposals on the table. And we're looking forward to the January 23rd target date where we may actually see a candidate recommendation, which is a more formal version of WCAG 2.1, that's the target date. So stay tuned for more information. And we're also looking forward to introducing you in more detail to Silver, which is the big update that's further out on the accessibility guidelines. So join us again in the new year. Thanks so much for coming along on this journey.